in Sam Raimi's 2002 smash hit Spider-Man, Peter Parker, played by Tobey Maguire, gets bitten by a genetically mutated spider. And what happens when you get bitten by a genetically mutated spider? You gain superpowers. You start having these little tiny hairs grow out of your hands, which in this case apparently is something very cool. And you decide, hey, what the heck, I'll try climbing a wall. So Peter Parker, with his newfound power, decides he's going to climb a wall. He's going to go up it with some velocity v. And as he climbs that wall, he's got to apply a force in order to overcome the force of gravity on him and leave the ground. In order to climb the wall, he'll apply just enough force to counteract the force of gravity on him and leave his acceleration at roughly zero. In that case, the force applied is going to be equal to mg, the force of gravity, or his mass, roughly 70 kilograms, times the acceleration due to gravity on the surface of the Earth, 9.81 meters per second squared. Since F equals ma, we determine that Peter Parker uses a force of about 686 newtons to climb the wall. So how much work do you do as you're climbing the wall? Well, to do work, you must apply a force over a distance. In this case, distance is going to be the height of the wall, because we're applying the force upwards and moving in that same direction. Therefore, work is going to be force times distance, or FD, where our force is the weight we're overcoming, 686 newtons, times the distance over which it's applied. And if we assume this is roughly an eight-story building, about 3 meters per story, that's 8 times 3, 24, let's say 25 meters just to make things nice and easy to round. So the work is force times distance, 686 newtons times 25 meters, or roughly just a little bit over 17,000 joules. That's about 4 food calories, and given that pizza is about 300 calories per slice, that's equivalent to Peter Parker or Spider-Man getting his exercise in by climbing up and down the wall 75 times. Tally-ho. Looking at this from a conservation of energy perspective, we know that the energy that uh, Peter Parker has at the top of the wall must be equal to the energy he has at the bottom of the wall. Therefore, we could say that Peter Parker's potential energy at the top of the wall, that's due to gravity, and he doesn't have any kinetic energy to begin with, must be equal to his potential energy due to gravity when he's at the bottom, plus the kinetic energy that he's acquired. Therefore, we could say that the kinetic energy at the bottom must be equal to the potential energy at the top minus the potential energy at the bottom. The kinetic energy at the bottom must be equal to mgh at the top minus mgh at the bottom. With just a little bit of algebra, we can first eliminate the masses, those cancel out, and then find that the velocity at the bottom is going to be equal to the square root of 2g times the quantity h at the top minus h at the bottom. Plugging in what we know, g is still 9.81 meters per second squared. Height at the top of the wall is 25 meters, and if we assume that the height at the bottom of the wall is about 5 meters, since it looks like that's about a story and a half, we find a final velocity at the bottom of about 19.8 meters per second. That's about 44 miles per hour. Tally ho. Here, let's take a look at this wonderfully brilliant maneuver in instant replay. Uh, and Newton's third law hits Peter Parker square in the nose. Looking at the entire sequence from a conservation of energy perspective, we start off with Peter Parker at the bottom of the wall. At that point, he has stored chemical potential energy from the food that he's eaten. 
Then, as he climbs the wall, he does work, expends that chemical potential energy, and translates this into gravitational potential energy at the top of the wall. Once he's at the top of the wall and slings his web, he then converts his gravitational potential energy into kinetic energy. So the entire time, energy is neither created nor destroyed, it's only changed. From chemical potential energy, to gravitational potential energy, to kinetic energy.